Hello, friends. Happy Wednesday. I have here an intemperance. See that? Very good cigars. I, I forget. I always forget the. Yeah, it just says intemperance cigar. I think these are Roma Craft, but I could be wrong about that. <clears throat> but they're very good, and uh, I'm going to smoke it. And I have uh, this goofy thing, and I'm not going to try to light a, light a cigar with it. It would probably work fine. I just don't want to risk it. So we will use a match. You know how they used to light things back in the dark ages. Ah. Trying to light your fingers. All right, we'll see how that goes. So I was actually thinking today. I'm, uh, you know, taking a couple of days vacation, so today was my last day of work, and it's like 4.30 now, so I'm, I'm essentially done. I'll check my email one more time, but it should be pretty well done. So I was thinking, you know, why not make this a, you know, real road wave ramble? Uh, I can go out in the car, and I can show you the snow and all that, and I'll smoke a cigar. Oh, We did get a lot of snow, um, over a foot. And if I had a guess, I'd say it's about 14 inches or so. And it's pretty. So I thought I'd drive you around and show you, show you some snow. Um, problem is, <laughs> my car is in better days. On Sunday night, I we've got a driveway where one car parks in front of the other. Uh, we've got a one-car garage with a one-lane driveway, and uh, it's it's silly. We haven't had a car in that garage in 20 years. And normally, I just park on the street. But since I haven't been going anywhere, um, my wife is the one that usually drives if we go out somewhere. So I parked my car first and then her car is behind so we can get in and out easily so on sunday night when i had to move all this snow it was heavy it was a real mess uh i i backed her car out and i cleared off the drive and then i tried to back mine out and the wheels were spinning and i thought you know i'm just tired i've, I've moved all this snow i don't want to start shoveling under this car i'll just leave it alone and uh yeah i just think then more snow came and I'm sure I could get it out if I wanted to, but I didn't want to, so it'll eventually melt. And the reason that's significant is my wife hasn't told me that I can't smoke a cigar in her car, but I get the feeling I can't smoke a cigar in her car. So anyway, um, that was... Uh, that was my plan, but since I can't do that, I figure I'll sit here with you guys and, and have a cigar in the basement. But before I get too far into anything, um, you should all know that I'm taking the night off on Friday, but I've got a guest host. So, uh, Chris, the rambling dilettante, my buddy Chris, has decided to play David Brenner to my Johnny Carson. About four of you got that joke. Chris is, is uh, a great guy. He does some very nice live streams on his own. and uh, I've, I've gotten to know him in recent months through the uh, Tuesday night meetup that he and uh, John all briared up and a co-host. I think they co-host. I don't know. But he's involved in it and uh, got to know him a bit better. He's a real good guy. 
and uh, he was willing to jump in and, and take the reins. So I'll put a link below. It's going to be on his channel, obviously, but it'll be Friday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And I think you'll you'll enjoy it. You know, it should be just as much fun as uh, sitting and listening to me for an hour. Uh, at least as much fun. Now, Chris is Canadian, so you know you got to keep that in mind. He's probably going to say some funny things and, you know, maybe uh, be overtly kind. But it, just just be nice to him. He'll, he'll do a good job. Uh, so... I've been thinking all day today about something. Well, I've been thinking about a lot of things, but one thing one thing keeps recurring. Uh, and that's the idea of smoking style. And I, Smoking styles, that's not really the word I'm looking for, but I don't know what else to call it. So I'm not talking about how you hold your pipe and things like that. I'm talking about why you, you smoke a pipe. And th this this kind of occurred to me. Last night, we were on this Tuesday night meetup that I was talking about. And uh, me and uh, oh, there's quite a few folks there, but my buddy Everett Young was there. And <clears throat> they're picking on poor Everett because he, he likes to have the occasional ball of haunted bookshop. And uh, he's gotten this reputation as this nonstop chain pipe smoker. Now, the truth is Everett and I have very similar smoking stuff. We both, uh, both probably average somewhere between 8 and 10 bowls a day, maybe 12 bowls on the odd day, and maybe 6 bowls on the odd day. So, yeah, 8 to 10 bowls is on average. And for both of us, a lot of those bowls are usually haunted bookshop. So I was feeling a little bad for Everett being picked on, and it occurred to me, and it's something that I've really never thought about, in, in detail, it occurred to me that <clears throat> different people approach pipe smoking f in in very different ways for for unique reasons. So, Everett and I are the kind of people that just enjoy smoking a pipe, and we want to do it throughout the course of our day, and that's what we do. There are folks that you know have a Friday night pipe, and that's it. They have one bowl and that's it for the week there are guys that go months without having a, a bowl of tobacco you know? and, and that's all good it's all fine uh, there's no right or wrongs it's got me thinking that that could actually impact how we perceive the experience of smoking a pipe because you know folks like myself are probably not going to be sitting there, you know, thinking about every little nuance, and we're probably not going to care if the pipe's bright and shiny. Um, it's a tool, and we're probably going to be pretty satisfied with a limited selection of tobaccos because we want to know what to expect, and we want to just be able to stuff it in the pipe and move on. Whereas guys that are once a day smokers, once a week smokers, once a month smokers, to them the the experience is is a much is a very different thing. It's it's going to be very special in a sense, and so they might really want to have you know a, a high end beautiful shiny pipe that uh, you know gets buffed every month or whatever, and they might clean it out extensively, and uh, they might want to just buy tinned tobacco that. They might only want to smoke a particular brand, or maybe they'll uh, go for the higher end stuff because this is a special thing for them, and and that makes a difference. Yeah, it really does make a difference. So I look at a guy smoking a you know K Woody that he got off of eBay, and I think, no, oh, the guy's smoking a pipe. I look at a guy that's smoking a, uh, you know, 19, 1920s uh, Dunhill uh, that he's holding with white gloves. I'm exaggerating, I know, but and I'm I'm not really thinking. Oh, look, there's a pipe smoker. I'm thinking, boy, that guy doesn't have his priorities right, but he does. 
He does. And this is the thing that dawned on me. His priorities are just different from mine. Now he's looking for a different experience than I'm looking for. It's one of those things that is so crazy simple when you say it out loud, but actually getting to the point where you really have understood and processed that uh, is, is a challenge. At least for me, it was. So, yeah, it's, it's and, you know, tobacco selection is, is another big part of this. You know, I pretty much only buy bulk tobacco. I will, you know, when a new thing comes out that I want to try, I'll buy a tin. Um, and I might enjoy it, but if it's not available in bulk, I won't buy it again. Because I just go through it too quickly. The tins are too expensive. But if you're you know, somebody that's smoking once a week, and, you know, a tin of tobacco will last you. you know, a tin of tobacco is going to last me a couple of days. A tin of tobacco might last you a couple of months. So, you know, very different economy there. And very different reasons to, to look for those things. So, you know, I do not appreciate a lot of tobaccos that are, you know, considered to be really excellent tobaccos because you know, I've, I've tried them, but they say, yeah, but this is just as good. And why would I buy that? Uh, but again, if, if it's something that I'm only doing occasionally, maybe it makes more sense to buy it then. I mean, if it takes you three months to go through a tin of a Scudo just to pick something out that I don't smoke and I know a lot of people like, uh, and I have smoked in it and it's quite good, but, you know, just, just to kind of pick that up. So if, if you're somebody that's only going to smoke a Scudo every, every month, then a tin is going to last you for, or every week even, a tin is going to last you for a couple months. Well... For that same amount, and I don't really know how much Shiskudo costs these days, but you could probably get four ounces, eight ounces of haunted bookshop, somewhere in that range. But it would take you a year at least to get go through that. You might not like haunted bookshop. I'm just saying a comparable blend. That was a bad, bad uh, choice. But you get what I'm saying. You know, you, you're you're not encouraged to seek out those bulk options simply because they don't matter to you. So I guess the the thing that intrigues me is if this was surprising to me, and again, I know it sounds silly when you say it out loud, but if this was surprising to me, what else is is going to wind up surprising me? You know, what else am I am I doing or thinking that I just haven't given the other person enough of the benefit of the doubt, or I haven't I haven't tried to step over the line and looked at it from their point of view. I try to do that. I really do. But this was a case where I clearly wasn't doing it. Anyway, I thought it was interesting. I hope you thought so, too. All right, folks. Definitely, this Friday... I want you to watch uh, the Rambling Dilettantes live stream at 8 p.m. Eastern. He's filling in for me. I appreciate it. <clears throat> and I want you guys to uh, to support that. Now, if he gets fewer viewers than I, I'm, I'm going to feel like, you know, we kind of gypped him. If he gets the same number of viewers as I, I'm going to wonder what that means. And if he gets more viewers than I, I will probably cry. So, you know, be judicious when you click that uh, that uh, link. Uh, no, I want everybody to go watch him. I'm, I'm just kidding. And for goodness sake, subscribe to him and, and give him a thumbs up on, on his video because uh, he, he deserves it. He's doing us uh, a big favor by giving you guys something to do this Friday night. I know you'd be absolutely lost without it, right? <laughs> Well, I am going to sign off now, and I will not see you until Sunday morning. Uh, the wife and I have got some plans of sorts. We don't know exactly what we're doing yet, but we're going to just relax and have some fun. So I'll see you Sunday. I'm sure I'll have some tales from the uh, 
the short road of day trips <laughs> by then. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll look forward to that. So have a good one, everybody. Uh, enjoy the rest of the week, and we'll talk soon.